Hi, Terry here from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel. Today's project is this really sweet card. I've used the Little Ladybug stamp set together with some of our Regal's six inch paper pack. So let's get started. These are all the measurements you need for all the elements required to create this project. So if you are interested in reproducing it, you can take a screenshot and refer to it later. This is the Little Ladybug stamp set and it's a free item that you can earn during our current celebration promotion. If you host a party and your sales make £250 or more, then as well as all the other stamping rewards you will earn, you will get this stamp set for free. Alternatively, if you place a large order of £250 or more, then you will also get this stamp set free. It's a great little set with some really cute images and some lovely sentiments. I'm going to be using Versafine Onyx Black Ink for most of the black stamping today. Now, I prefer this ink, it's my favourite black ink because it's an intense black colour and it stays wet long enough that you can emboss with it. Now, if you haven't got this ink, you can use Memento Tuxedo Black, but you will need to overstamp your image or sentiment with Versamark afterwards. And the best way to do this is using your Stamper Artist tool. I'm preparing my Whisper White Normal Weight cardstock with my embossing buddy to remove any static. And then I'm going to stamp my sentiment into the bottom right corner. Then I can cover this with clear embossing powder. I will eventually die cut this out using one of the stitched So Sweetly dies and this is the second size down. And I'll position it so the sentiment stays at the bottom right corner. I'm also going to stamp my little ladybug onto the same mat and cover her with clear embossing powder. I'm going to stamp my inside mat next and again I'll prep it with my embossing buddy before stamping and then I'll cover the image with clear embossing powder. And next the flower, I've got another piece of Whisper White card for this. I'm prepping it with my embossing buddy, stamping with Versafine and covering with clear powder. Then I can melt the powder on the sentiment and each of the images using my heat tool. Okay, the only stamping left to do now is the actual ladybug frame. Now the mat I'm using is again normal weight Whisper White and it's the same size as my inside panel. So for the A4 users it's 14.4 centimetres by 10 centimetres. For 8.5 by 11 inch users it's 5.5 inches by 4 inches. And you want to start with something approximately this size. Now I've already positioned my stamp where I want to start. Um, it's in exactly the same position that I had it for my previous card and I don't want to move it because I know it's straight. All I did was lay my white panel into my Stampratus as shown so that the right hand side was up against the right hand raised edge of my Stampratus and then I laid my stamp near the top edge of the white panel, closed my plate and picked up the stamp. Okay, now I'm going to check that this is straight so you want to do something similar. You need a sheet of acetate and I've cut this to the size of my Stampratus. You'll see it used in lots of my videos. Now I'm going to ink up using stays on ink this time. This is a solvent based ink and it's great for slick surfaces like acetate and it will dry. 
so once it's dried I'm not going to transfer the ink onto my fingers and then onto my project. So I can stamp down an image onto the acetate and then I can remove my white panel eventually. There we go. And using the grid paper underneath I can check that my image is straight. And that's the easiest way of doing it. If it wasn't, you can reposition your stamp, clean off your acetate with stays on remover and then go again. I am using VersaFine ink again, but remember you can use Memento Tuxedo Black or in fact any other black ink, but you will need to overstamp with VersaMark, so it will take a little bit longer. Now stamping the first row is quite easy because I know my cardstock needs to be butted up against the side of the Stamparatus, so the positioning is already there. Just make sure that when you position your stamp you've got it set back from the edge of the card a little. You need to allow room for all the different shapes of the ladybugs. Okay so I've got my card butted up against that right hand edge and now I'm just positioning my first four ladybugs into that corner and this will be the top edge of my card. Once I'm happy with the positioning, I can remove the acetate, I don't want that cardstock to move, ink up my stamp, stamp it down, and then I'm going to cover with clear embossing powder. Then I'll melt it straight away with my heat tool. Finishing off the row is again quite easy because you know the cardstock needs to be butted up against that right hand edge of the Stamparatus. So everything will be in line as long as your cardstock's where it should be. Now use, I've replaced my acetate into the Stamparatus and you need to make sure it's in that top right hand corner all the time, okay? Um, then I'm going to position my next four images. You want to make sure you get the spacing right between the last one you you stamped and embossed and your new four. Okay, so make sure you get approximately the same gap. Once you're happy you can remove the acetate. Now I was a bit premature here and I inked up on my stamp before I remembered that I only actually want two ladybugs this time. So I need to mask the last two off and I'm just using a scrap piece of copy paper to do this. So you can slide it under the acetate into position, then ink up your stamps and stamp them down. Okay, cover with clear embossing powder and then heat with your heat tool. So that's the first side of the frame now complete. I'm going to go down the left hand side now, so I'm going to replace my acetate, my, I've turned my Whisper White panel a quarter turn, so I can line up the images on my acetate with the images I've already stamped and embossed. Now I'm using the edge of the white panel against the grid paper to make sure that it's completely straight. Once I'm happy with all the positioning, I can ink up my stamps, stamp them down, cover with clear embossing powder and melt with my heat tool. I'm going to finish this side off with another set of four so I don't have to mask anything. I've just got to line the images up. So I'm making sure that the gap between the four already stamped and the ones I want to stamp is about even. And then I'm making sure that my white panel is completely straight against the grid paper underneath. Once I'm happy, I can ink up my stamp, stamp it down, cover with powder and heat set. So now that's two sides of my frame completed. I'm going to complete the other long side next because this again will be two sets of four images. 
The easiest way of lining up this side is to use the die that you're going to use for the inside panel. This will help with the spacing. Now you want to make sure that it fits and there's enough room around the edge of it so you can also fit in that black contrasting mat. So I'm just narrowing the gap a little. I went a bit wide. And then once I'm happy, I can get rid of that die. Just take your time and make sure you get the spacing right. Then I can remove the acetate sheet, ink up my stamp, stamp it down, cover with powder and heat set again. I'm sure you've got the idea by now of what we need to do next. So I'm just going to line up my four images again on the imaging sheet with those I've already stamped, making sure that gap between them is approximately the same size and then making sure that my white panel is completely straight against the grid paper. Then I can ink up, stamp down, cover with clear powder and heat set. I'm using the die again to help me position for the final side of the frame. So you still want to make sure that you can leave enough room to get that contrasting black mat underneath. And then it's just, once you've got that spacing, it's just a question of moving the card panel up and or down to get the spacing between the images correct. You need to leave a gap that's wide enough to get one more image in it, but you don't want it too big. So it's a bit of trial and error. Then when you're happy, check that your white panel is completely straight before removing the acetate, inking your stamp, stamping it down, covering with powder and heat setting. Now for this last ladybug, you need to choose which image you want to stamp. I chose the little one that's led on his back or her back. And then you want to mask off all the other ladybugs. So this time I'm using two small pieces of copy paper and covering those images underneath the acetate. Then I can carefully remove the acetate so as not to disturb anything and stamp my final image. Once your frame is complete and all embossed you want to test your inside panels. Now I need to cut down a black mat to fit. The final size will depend on how big you made your ladybug frame. Mine ended up being 9.5 centimetres by 6.5 centimetres, which is three and three quarter inches by two and nine sixteenths of an inch. But yours could be different to that. So just cut your mat, see if it fits. If it doesn't, trim it down a little bit more. And do a final check against the ladybug frame to make sure it looks okay. You want a tiny white border outside of that black mat for it to look just right. The frame itself is very simple to colour. I'm using the Stamping Blends alcohol markers in dark smoky slate and dark real red. I'm using the smoky slate for the faces and that one tummy and then the real red for all the backs and you want to colour all the others in exactly the same way.
Once you've finished colouring the flower, you just want to separate the stem from the flower head and you can add dimensionals to the back of the flower head. I've already added them to the ladybug. Now for the frame, I'm going to cut round the outside of it, just following the shape of the ladybugs. Once I've done that, I'll glue it to a black panel and then I'll cut round that as well. So I've got a nice thin border of black all the way around the frame. And now I can start putting the card together. My card base is in basic black, just half a standard sheet of card, scored in the middle and folded to create a portrait card. Then I have a real red mat onto which I'm going to layer this designer series paper. And this is real red from the Regal's six inch stack. Once I've done that, I can add the panel to the front of the card. And then I can also add my little ladybug white mat to the inside of the card. I've added my sentiment panel to the basic black mat and now I can decorate this panel. Once complete, I can add it to my frame and then I can position the frame onto the front of the card base. And that's it, we're all finished. I love making these cards. And here's another look at my original one. Now I coloured the flower on this one with Daffodil Delight. I couldn't use that for my video because my pens are almost dry. And then I have made 
another one. This was actually the first one I made and you can see really the frame is way too big, which is why I adjusted it later. And I used the layering oval for my scalloped black mat and this one of the stitch shapes ovals for my inside mat for this one. I mean, it's still cute. I'll still use the card. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.